So hi, welcome to this series lecture in applying statistics to research. So but before we officially start, let me explain first the rationale of why I created this course. Based from my personal observation, most of the uh, undergrad at saka yung semesteral students, nakakalimutan natin yung fundamental concepts of statistics pagdating natin sa thesis writing. Okay? So that is why I created this uh, video para at least pag nandun na tayo in the near future, pwede natin balikan yung mga lectures. At least, this will guide us when we will be writing our uh, chapter 3 in the methodology. Okay? So, but before we start, let us take a look at this picture first. Uh, in this uh, fast fact, makita natin na 3 in every Filipino children belong to poor families in 2015. So, the question ngayon dito is, Paano kaya nakuha ng Philippine Statistics Authority yung number na ito? Eh, hindi naman nila na-question lahat ng mga bata sa buong Pilipinas, sa buong bansa. Okay? So that is why it is very interesting to know kasi this will aid us in the uh, policy making or in legislative actions by the government. Okay? And then, also in this lecture, we will also discuss the reason why do we have to study statistics. Okay? And then, what is the difference between descriptive and then the inferential statistics? And of course, yung basic uh, sampling methods. Okay? So let's get started. Hi, so every person, iba-iba ang dating ng statistics class sa atin. Others, uh, really, uh, medyo naiiyak talaga sila once nakikita nila yung mga numbers kasi... Ayaw nila as much as possible yung numbers but they don't have a choice kasi pag enroll nila sa master nila or sa undergrad meron talagang statistics class lalo na pag may thesis ka or dissertation so yan may iyak the other one is this one ito yung mga estudyante na habang nakikinig sa Google Class or sa Google Meet okay naka-on lang yung <laughs> naka-on lang yung uh, naka-join lang sa class pero natutulog natutulog sa <laughs> online and then, ito naman, uh, ito yung mga studyante na, okay, so-so lang, well, I don't care, papasa naman ako or hindi. But others, there are also some uh, students na they really love numbers, they really like statistics. Okay, so that is why I prepare this course para sa lahat ng mga, lahat ng mga klase na tao. Okay, as much as possible, we will explain the concepts in, in layman's term para mas madali nating maintindihan. Okay, so yan. So, why? Why do we have to study statistics? Bakit kailangan nating pag-aralan ang statistics? First is, we are surrounded with numbers. Okay? Kahit saan tayo titingin, maraming numbers yan. Lalo na pag nasa trabaho ka. There are uh, data, tons of data na pwede nating makita. So that is why it is very important to make sense out of that data. To summarize that data. To listen kung ano bang sinasabi ng data natin. Okay? So that is very important. Next is, to draw conclusion from those data. Okay? Kasi ito yung data natin. Ito yung sinasabi ng data. Anong masasabi ng data ngayon? And then we can make a conclusion leading to improve the business process or the policy process or the policy or the institution or the industry that you are currently working. And then, of course, lalo na sa mga MBA students or MPA students, this will help us make a good decision. Okay? Good decision based on statistics, based on what is really happening. Hindi gaya ng mga uh, chismis lang o mga haka-haka, yung mga nakikita natin sa social media. And then, yun na yun. And then they will create a decision based from that haka-haka. So, hindi masyadong maganda yan. So, it is very important that we have to base our uh, decisions on numbers or on data. So, there are two main branches of statistics. We have the descriptive and then yung isa, inferential statistics. So, descriptive statistics are methods that help collect, summarize, present, and analyze a set of data. Okay? So, in this descriptive statistics, from the root word itself, describe. Okay? So, describe mo lang yung data. So, dito, uh, we will learn yung, uh, yung mga graphs, yung mean, median, at saka mode. Okay? So, the other one is yung tinatawag natin inferential statistics, which are methods used that use the data collected from small group to draw conclusions from the larger group. So, ito yung normally ginagawa natin sa research. Okay? Ano bang ibig sabihin nito? To differentiate this one, let us take a look at this example. For example, uh, yung respondents mo ngayon, yung sampling frame mo ngayon is yung 
atau 1,000 students. 1,000 students. And then, if you are going to take a look, kukuha ka ngayon ng, let's say, 300 students that will serve as your sample sa 1,000 na yon, and then you will describe kung ano ba yung gender nila, ano ba yung courses nila. So, you are just using the descriptive statistics. However, pag yung problem mo ngayon is, for example, sa 300 na mga respondents mo ngayon, kukunin mo yung, uh, let's say, average na allowance of that of those students and then using the average na makuha mo ngayon sa sample mo you will predict na ano ba yung allowance ng buong 1000 na estudyante mo or buong population mo so in this in that type of example yan yung inferential na part but basically we will take a look at uh, those inferential statistics later in this series Okay? And then, i-familiarize muna natin yung mga basic terminologies na normally na parati nating uh, makikinggan along this course. So, first is the population. Okay? A population consists of all the items or individuals about which you want to reach the conclusions. Okay? Yan yung population natin. And then, yung parameter is a measure that describes the characteristic of a population. So, for example, yung sa 1,000 natin kanina na population size, for example, 1,000 students, yan yung population natin. And then, i-describe mo ano ba yung mga courses, ano ba yung mga courses na nandun, ano ba yung uh, mean uh, weight, ah, mean weight, mean height, mean grade, mean something. So, yung mga measures na ginamit natin to describe that particular population ang tawag natin dyan is parameter. Okay? And then, using sampling, yung araw natin dyan, using sampling, okay, we will now have yung tinatawag nating sample. Okay? Yung sample natin is the portion of the population selected for analysis. Okay? So, yung example natin kanina, out of 1,000, kukuha lang tayo ng 300. Okay, that will serve as our sample. And then, yung sample natin, let's say kunin natin yung same pa rin kanina, uh, height, weight, uh, average inca, average salar, uh, allowance, or uh, average grade nila. So, kung yung sample mo lang ang kukunin mo ng mga measures na yun, ang tawag natin doon is so statistic. statistic. So, a statistic is a measure that describes the characteristic of a sample and then using that particular statistic let's say average uh, allowance or average grade to predict or to infer the characteristic of the population so yan na yung tinatawag nating inferential statistics okay so dito sa side ng sampling pababa yan yung descriptive I describe lang natin and then if we want to infer the characteristic or to predict the characteristic of the population yun na yung application natin in our inferential statistics. Okay? And then take note guys, it is very important to differentiate kung ano ba yung gagawin na study natin. Are we going to do descriptive or yung inferential? Kasi yung uh, framing ng statement of the problem natin at saka hypothesis will be based kung ano ba yung uh, gusto natin. Okay? And then we will discuss uh, those mga bagay na yun pagdating natin sa application to research. Okay? So, but yung question natin dito ngayon, why do we have to do Sampling. E bakit, for example, sa 1,000 na yan, bakit hindi na lang yung buong 1,000 ang kukunin natin ng response? Okay? So, there are some reasons. First is, less time-consuming. Okay? Take note, guys. Pag kukunan mo yung measure na yung 1,000 na yon, you have to spend a lot of time. Okay? Gaya nung uh, census, di ba? Yung census natin is buong Pilipinas yan. Lahat ng uh, yung buong population. So, it takes time. So, kung nagmamadali ka to have a policy to address a uh, very urgent issue, so mahirap kung uh, buong population ang kunin mo. Okay? And then, of course, less costly. Mas mahal. Take note, you will you're going to hire a lot of enumerators okay? to distribute the survey. Okay? So, mahirap yan. At saka, medyo mahal. And then, more practical to administer. So, mas madali and then, of course, take note ha, for example, sa thesis writing mo or sa dissertation writing, eh, pag buong population ang kukunin mo, hindi practical na you will be able to finish the the course within uh, a semester or a year. 
Okay, so that is why we have to do sampling. Okay? Okay, so dito naman tayo ngayon sa tinatawag nating sampling methods. So, uh, sampling can be categorized into probability sampling at saka non-probability sampling. So, sa non-probability sampling, nakita natin dito, we have judgment sample, quota sample, chunk sample, convenience sampling. Okay, and then, okay, non-probability uh, samples can have uh, certain advantages such as convenience, speed, at saka lower cost. So, madali. For example, uh, siguro, Kung naka-experience ka na mag-conduct ng survey and then ang ginawa mo is ah, gumawa ka ngayon ng survey questionnaire and then, finorward mo lang yung link ng survey questionnaire mo sa mga friends mo. Okay? Okay. Friend, paki-forward dito friends sa mga kakilala mong friend na ganyan, ganyan. So, using that one, yan yung tinatawag nating convenient sampling based on you are doing uh, your data gathering based on your convenience. Okay? And sometimes, hindi yan pwede. Okay? Sometimes, in quantitative research, it's very too, it is very uh, difficult na to argue that your, the result of your uh, study can be generalized to the population pag ang ginamit mo is uh, convenient sampling. So that is why most of the researchers, or almost all of the researchers, dito tayo sa tinatawag nating uh, probability sampling or tinatawag commonly tinatawag nating simple random sampling okay so uh, paano ba tong simple random sampling natin yung simple random sampling in which one where each item in the frame has equal chance of being selected okay but before we discuss meron tayong tinatawag na frame ano ba yung frame or yung tinatawag nating sampling frame yung sampling frame natin is yung list of the population okay for example Yung 1,000 students natin kanina So dapat meron tayong uh, sampling frame So kukuha tayo dun sa registrar of the names of the 1,000 students Okay? It is very important na yung sampling frame mo Should came from a very uh, reliable source Okay? Hindi pwede na list lang sa uh, Facebook me members Hindi pwede yan So dapat reliable source yung sampling frame natin Okay? And then Sa simple random sampling, ang gagawin natin, yung 1,000 na nasa listahan mo ngayon, dapat daw equal chances of being taken as to be part of your research. So, yan lang yung probabilistic sampling. Yung probability of each uh, respondent natin sa population natin uh, is known. Okay? And equal. Dapat importante yung equal natin. So, how are we going to do uh, simple random sampling in actual research? So, ito yung ginagamit ko yung tinatawag natin, uh, punta ka lang sa randomizer.org. Okay? So, ang gagawin mo lang, yan, tingnan mo, punta ka sa browser, enter mo lang yan, randomizer.org, and then dito ka sa sets. How many sets do you want? So, ilang sets ba? One lang. One, and then how many numbers per set? So, ito na yung sample size natin. Let's say, for example, ang gusto natin, 300, and the number range. So, yung number range natin, ilan ba yung uh, sa population natin Let's say 1, 1 to 1,200 Okay, and then do you Unique, so dapat unique And then do you wish to sort? Yes, least to greatest And then do you wish to view the random numbers Place markers off So pag ninek mo yung run, uh, randomizer And then automatic, lalabas na yung 300 na sinelect mo out of 1,200 na respondent So itong mga numbers na ito ngayon Ito yung mga numbers na titingnan mo ngayon sa list Okay, for example, this 1,196. So, titingnan mo ngayon dun sa, sa list mo, sino ba yung respondent na ito? And then, yung respondent na yun, yun yung bibigyan mo ngayon ng sorbic questionnaire. Okay, yan yan. ba? Medyo mas mahirap siya compared to convenient sampling kasi convenient sampling, forward-forward mo lang. Ito is, lahat ng mga IDs na nandito, ito yung mga respondents natin in our study. So, medyo mahirap lang siya kasi... Isa-isahin mo yan. Kung for example, yung 577, tingnan mo nga yun sa list mo. Sino ba yung, uh, ano bang pangalan ng name uh, 577? So, ano yung name na yun, forward mo yung uh, survey sa kanya. Okay? So, this is how we do simple random sampling. Okay, so dito naman tayo sa tinatawag nating uh, systematic random sampling. So, by definition, it is a method that involves selecting the first element randomly then choosing every kth element thereafter. So dito, meron na tayong formula, but uh, madali lang naman. So yung k natin dito can be defined as 
the capital letter N divided by the small letter N. Yung capital letter N natin dito indicates the population size. And then yung small letter N indicates the sample size. So for example, if yung uh, population size natin is 800, and then yung small letter N natin dito is 40, so divide mo lang yan, so yung case interval mo dito is 20. So yung 20 ngayon, lista ka lang 1 to 20, and then using the bunot-bunot calculator or randomizer, you select a one number na, that will serve as your starting point. Okay, so for example here, 8. So yung 8 natin, yan na yung uh, first respondent natin. And then how are we going to get the second respondent? So i-add mo lang yung 20. So 8 plus 20, you have 28 plus 20, 48 plus 20, 68, so on and so forth. So itong mga numbers dito ngayon, ito uh, yung mga ID natin na titingnan natin dun sa sampling frame natin. Yung sa list natin, sino ba ito si respondent number 8? Sino ba ito si respondent number 28? Number 48, number 68. Ito yung mga pangalan na isi-send natin yung uh, link natin of our survey form. Okay? So, yan. So, dito naman tayo sa tinatawag nating stratified sampling. Okay? So, dun kasi sa random sampling at saka sa systematic sampling, there is a chance na one group of or one group in your population will not be properly represented. So that is why, to ensure na properly represented lahat, we are going to use yung tinatawag natin stratified sampling. Okay, normally, in my previous experience, ito yung ginagamit ko, lalo na pag yung uh, strata of your population can easily can be easily identified. Okay, so ano ba yung pin uh, sinasabi ko dito? So yung stratified sampling, items are randomly selected from each of several populations or strata. Yung strata natin, in this particular case, is a subpopulation composed of items with similar characteristics in a stratified sampling design. Okay? So, para mas maintindihan natin to, let us take a look at this uh, example here. So, you have courses nandito. So, yung courses na nandito, yung business ad, uh, marketing, finance, accountancy, yun yung tinatawag nating strata. Okay? Strata, so, for example, yung estudyante natin dito, yung total sample sa population size natin is 600 and then we can divide that population into these groups. So, dapat, nandito sila lahat. Okay? And then, so we have uh, 231, 67, 98, at saka 295, uh, 205. And then, kunin natin yung percentage. Yung percentage natin, for example, in this particular case here, 231 divided by 601, that is 68, 38%. And then 67 divided by 601, that is 11%, so on and so forth. Hanggang maabot tayo sa total na 100%. And then, using this percentage column na dyan, i-distribute natin yung sample size natin. Let's say, for example, using a sampling sample size calculation, nakuha mo ngayon na 300, 300 yung required mo, including the uh, non-response allowance at 20%. So, yung 300 ngayon, i-distribute mo siya based sa distribution na, or sa percentage na 38, 11, 16, at saka 34. And then, madali na lang yung kunin using your Excel, right? So, kung hindi mo alam mag-Excel, uh, it multiply mo na lang. For example, this one case is 30, 300. So, 300 times 38%. So, yan yung 115. 300 times 11%, that is 33, so on and so forth. So, this is how we do the stratified sampling. Okay? So, next is yung tinatawag natin cluster sampling. A cluster sampling, so the frame is divided into representative groups or clusters, then all items in randomly selected clusters are chosen. So, normally, ang ginagamit, ginagamit ito pa yung geographical na uh, geographical method. So, for example, in this particular case, sa buong Pilipinas, divided by region. And then using the regions na yan, randomly, pipili ka ngayon, bunot-bunot-bunot, and then kung ano yung region na mapili mo. And then all of the uh, respondents, all of the people, all of the persons in that particular region are your uh, sample size. Kaya nga lang, one of the disadvantages of this cluster, something medyo kailangan mo ng mas mataas na uh, sample size. Okay? So, the references of this lecture are from Berenson at saka kay Black. So, if you have some questions or clarifications, please comment down below and I will try to answer your questions as soon as I can.